So, the issue that exists with this uh, 2002 Montana in the HVAC system is the uh, airflow between the hot and cold settings. So when we're on the cold setting, turning it on, we get uh, full airflow, essentially. Full airflow, right? It's between the hot and cold settings. Right now it's on cold, and when I switch it to hot, it just takes a second or two for the cold air, hot cold mixing damper, and no airflow. So cold again. I actually was looking at the uh, cam linkage mechanism on this air box and which flaps are opening and closing as the cam linkage rotates through its complete cycle. And I'm actually quite perplexed as to how General Motors developed or designed this air box. I'm going to try and explain what's going on here. So this is the blower motor. This rotates. This is the uh, the housing that fits right about. Okay, this damper damper motor here controls this flap here. In effect, that mounts right there. So you have the choice of pulling in the cold air from the exterior of the vehicle or recirculating the already warm air uh, as the position of this damper door is at present. Air that gets pulled into the blower motor. The blower motor rotation causes this uh, chamber in here to become positively charged with uh, air pressure. It's going to show you here. Through this chamber here, rotates and gets pushed through the AC evaporator unit, which is this thing here, right? On the flip side, after the, that's the AC evaporator unit, the other side of it anyway, right? This is the heater core. This gets installed right through here, as I'm attempting to do right now, and sits right in there like that. So then after passing through the AC evaporator, the remaining air passes through this heater core. And the blend door, which is this one right here, this is the uh, this is the rotating lever for it, right? That's the blend door. So if this door is all is all the way closed like this, all air flows from the AC evaporator into the heater core. If this door is like this, you effectively close off the heater core passages. Thus, all air from the evaporator just continues on to. well here through the front vents which are these guys or through the defrost vent of the windshield which is this one here right let's say for argument's sake I want full heat those uh, blend doors fully shut the uh, the other chambers where it diverts to the front or the defrost or what have you and all the air then flows through to the heater core which is right here. And then after passing through the heater core, the air becoming uh, heated at that point, this, this cover forces the air from the heater core to travel through this little vent opening here. Now here's the perplexing thing. Through the rotation of this uh, cam linkage mechanism, the only time that, that that door is open to allow the hot air that's just passed through from the heater core to flow into the, the mixing chamber area where it diverts to the various sections is when the, the main front vent should just... The only time that this small section is is open to allow all the heater core air to flow into the 
the the mixing chamber where it flows off to the various sections is when this door, the front vent doors, are closed. So the only thing that can, the, the air can flow, the hot air can flow at that point, is through the defrost vent and a little bit through place this here and a little bit through this vent here which is the footwell vent there's another piece here this piece here installs right there So when those doors and start to close are the only time that these vents start to open, which is absolutely retarded to me. I don't understand why General Motors would design that to prevent any hot air from flowing through the front vents to heat the, uh, the passengers riding in the front and the rear. That is just absolutely perplexing to me. Why would General Motors design an air box? that would prevent hot air from getting to the passengers when it's minus 20, minus 30 outside. Why would General Motors design an air box that would prevent hot air from coming into the cabin? Except for the defrost of the windshield. And that's the only time? Like, what are you doing, General Motors? So, concluding this, there's not, there was nothing wrong with the operation of the air box. The fact that there was no hot air coming through the front vents was by the very design and nature of this uh, air box that General Motors has designed. Thanks General Motors. So maybe I can remove this door completely, just scrapping it, allowing air the maximum amount of air to always flow into the mixing chamber where it can be diverted to the various uh, locations like defrost or front vents or footwell vent without restriction or maybe there was a redesign of this very stupid design that General Motors came up maybe in 2003 or 2004 that allowed a different operation of the cam linkage mechanisms with the blend doors. I'm uh, not certain. Do I pull another air box from a newer vehicle or from an older vehicle that actually had good heat circulation without restriction by design? <laughs> or do I just eliminate that door and reassemble? Hmm. I sincerely do not know what you were thinking, General Motors. For the love of God, why? I'm opting to remove this damper door, for better or for worse. This is a temperature probe for the air conditioning evaporator. Make sure that it runs up, through, and around. So if it came out, I believe the best way to put it back is just to wrap it on over top, and then back under where you clip it. Just like that. And then run the length of the wire down to the opening. There's a little slot in the box where it'll sit just like there. I'm going to secure that with some silicone. 
let it dry and then reassemble this half here. So the wire will sit right here. The foam of the damper seals right up against this edge and the two shall never meet. Aluminum tape, foil, foil tape. What I want to do with this tape is just to put a small piece there and there to which the other side I'll actually be placing a epoxy. Manufacturer of this product thought of everything. I'm actually a big fan so far. Not only does it come with part A and part B of the epoxy, it also comes with just a little tray and a little stir stick. You can stir it up and actually use it to deposit in there. You see a nice meniscus build up and I moved the linkage through. I mean it would have made a mess if it uh, if it contacted but in effect it didn't contact. And back. Meniscus is still present so it didn't touch. Awesome. So no interference when it cures. And the bottom Bottom I had a little difficulty getting in, as you can see it kind of smeared across the uh, edge there just because it didn't have the clearance to get it in there, but it's still got a nice meniscus build up on the top edge. So those holes are effectively sealed and I have undone the General Motors calamity or General Motors terrible engineering that they conducted. The coarseness of the one on the left is just slightly more than the coarseness or thickness of the one on the right. And yet they look identical. You can also tell that this is an 8 mil and that's a 7 mil. So the 8 mil ones have to go back where they came out. The 7 mil ones are essentially 90% the rest of the box. There's only like 10% of these 8 mil ones. Because if you put the 8 mil one through where the 7 mil, you're going to actually cause the threads to actually bite too hard into the plastic, maybe causing damage to the plastic part. And the 7 mil one won't fit right in the holes that are designed for the 8 mil. Kind of install it at the 12 o'clock position and maybe somewhat at the 11 o'clock or 10.30 position. Well, looking, looking at it this way is what I mean to say. 12 o'clock, sort of 11 o'clock position, that's what I'm sort of thinking. It should connect right up to those hoses in the engine bay. Make sure that these depression tabs are on this side of the box. Because on this side of the box, when I flip it around, is the brake booster unit. You can't get to it on that side. You need to be able to get to it with pliers from this side on the engine bay side, where we remo removed the ignition coils.